So the default that we're going to have is the wait time. So we're going to create another variable called defaults. And it's going to be an object. And you have a property, just one property called wait time. And if you guys were following along very well, you did, you'd notice that the wait time we're setting is exactly the same name as the wait time that we passed on in settings over here. So this wait time here will override the wait time that we have here. So if we didn't pass that wait time, we'll use a wait time of 400 milliseconds. But now that we're passing one, this 400 milliseconds will not get used. Instead of we're going to use the 2000 milliseconds that was passed in. Okay, so like now let's continue writing the rest of this function over here. In fact, since this function will be the in initializer for our um, plugin, for example, it's going to set all the variables that we need on our plugin, we're going to have to instantiate it inside of the main function of our plugin. So we're going to have to say new ls advanced slider. Okay, we'll just copy and paste that quickly here. So what we're going to pass it is this as a first parameter <coughs> sorry and then secondly we're going to pass it the options that were passed by the user when calling our function so inside of this function here that we've created we're going to set this set setting this options to override whatever we already have here by default so we're going to create a, another variable and it will be part of this functions um, namespace so it's going to be this dot options equals to an empty object so what we're going to do is we're going to say this dot element equals to element that was passed so this has been cached this element here has been made as part of this function so anywhere that we can access this functions um, namespace we can access this element as well there you'll see what I mean in a moment just hold on guys okay so what we're going to do is we're going to overwrite whatever the default is over here so how we do that is if you remember from last last video video that we did we do jQuery dot extend and then we'll pass parameters like this so first we're going to pass options and then second we're going to pass defaults and then third we're going to pass settings and guys if you're wondering what happened what this does is the last parameter that you pass to extend will override the second to last parameter and then the second to last parameter whatever this has overwritten in this all of that will be stored in defaults temporarily and then whatever's here will override whatever's in options so finally options will have all the updated values that we need and then anything we need to refer to in our plugins we're going to refer it from options okay so now that we've overwritten the defaults what we're going to do is we're going to set all the variables that we need to access anywhere we are in the plugin so the first one is the auto slide so we'll add auto slide to the namespace and then we'll retrieve it from the options that we have here since the options have all the options that we need anything that we need to get in terms of settings for our plugin we'll get it from that options and actually one more thing guys i do notice that we needed to put this in, in front of um, this option is very good here since anything that we need to access that's part of this function it has to be preceded by the keyword this so we'll add this dot auto slide when we say that what we are, what we are specifying is we want it to be part of this function over here since in JavaScript functions sort of behave like classes so they're very powerful in JavaScript so when you want something to be part of a function you say this dot that variable okay so this dot auto slide equals to this dot options dot auto slide okay so next this dot carousel inner equals to we're going to use the jQuery selector and then we select 
whatever class we've been passed by carousel in a, inside of the options here since we want to store the element not just the class i mean the class is not really useful in this case we want to get the element so we'll say jquery selector and then we pass in the class that we've got from the options over here so this dot options dot carousel inner and then we're going to do that for the wrapper as well so we're going to say this dot wrapper equals to select this dot options dot wrapper This dot left transparent across to select this dot options dot transparent left transparent element. So guys, um, since this is going to be take a, a little while, so I'll just fast forward the video and then I'll type this all out and then I'll explain what I've just done in a second okay okay here we go so where we were at we were at right sorry we were at left transparent element so I did went out and then I typed all the remaining ones like right transparent element and transparent width so basically let me just explain what we just did here let's go back to our custom.js and then I'll show you quickly what all of these mean so as you can see in our custom.js, we did pass in an object with different settings so that we can override our plugins default. So for each of these, we want to store whatever they have inside of our plugin. And hence, the reason why we're doing something like this. All of this, this dot transparent element, with the exception of two, which we did not pass in through our constructor which is we, we did not pass in those two settings that is this single image width and the single image width that is calculated depending on whatever we've been passed in so I'll just show you how we calculate that single image width 